a serious nature and it should be investigated to the full extent. This shows that the Triple C have shown through announcing an investigation that there is a level of corruption that has possibly met the threshold, otherwise they wouldn't be investigating it. Now, Jackie Trad should have been sacked months ago. Not today, not stood down. She should have been sacked months ago. Whether it was the ski trips to Whistler in Canada, whether it was the purchase of the investment property that she didn't tell anyone about and didn't update her parliamentary register, whether it was losing responsibility for Cross River Rail. Jackie Trad has had too many chances. But because we have a weak Premier, and the weak Premier is afraid to act on Jackie Trad. That's why she's not being sacked, she's only been stood down pending an investigation. Anastasia Palaszczuk, our Premier, should sack Jackie Trad today. Show leadership and sack her. We don't need a temporary speaker. 300,000 Queenslanders have lost their jobs because of the COVID-19 coronavirus crisis. 300,000 Queenslanders have lost their jobs. And we are now in the middle of an economic catastrophe and crisis, and we have a temporary treasurer. Queenslanders don't want a temporary treasurer. We need a real treasurer to get on with the job to help us through the economic crisis. Over to you guys. Just to spell yep. it out. Yeah, sure. So uh, the opposition received an anonymous tip-off last year in November. I immediately referred that to the Triple C, and the allegation is this: that a person applied for a position for the new school of the Inner City South State Secondary College. The person applied in good faith for the position. They went through a recruitment process with an independent recruitment panel. The panel selected this individual person as a su successful candidate. That candidate then was required to meet with Jackie Trad. The candidate then met with Jackie Trad, and then, out of the blue, the position was re-advertised. The candidate was then offered the, afforded the opportunity to reapply for the job. Uh, I'm not sure whether she did apply for the job, but someone else did apply for the job. That second candidate then met with Jackie Trad by phone hookup, and that person got the job. So I'm clearly saying this. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to work out that if you apply for a job and you get the job and then you're called into Jackie Trad's office and then the position's re-advertised, then it's quite clear what I'm saying. Jackie Trad interfered with the independent selection of a school principal in Queensland. She is arrogant. She thinks she is above everybody else in Queensland. In Queensland. Jackie Trad thinks she can get away with this stuff because of her arrogance and the belief that she is above everybody else. Well, my message to Jackie Trad and to the Premier is she's not. She's got to be held accountable and she's got to start by not standing down today by Anastasia sacking her. The Education Department has previously said the reason that the original candidate didn't get the job was because new modelling showed more students would be going to that school and therefore an executive principal would be required, a more experienced principal would be required. What, what do you make of that? Well, this is the cover-up. This is the cover-up of that. So uh, I recall at the time the ABC did an RTI, invest, uh, an RTI application as well because the allegation from the Director General was, or response to the allegation from the Director General, was that the, uh, the school had new data to show, or the government had new data to show that it was going to be a bigger school. Through the RTI process, it was actually found out that the school modelling was done in January. The school modelling was done before the original application was put out and published. So it was rubbish. They already had the modelling. They knew the numbers. Uh, what they did effectively is to construct a mechanism by which Jackie Trad could get away with not having her preferred candidate get the job. The person that obviously got the job originally, who was uh, skilled for it, who went through an independent selection process and was found to be uh, having the abilities to be able to do the job, should have got the job. And then, bizarrely, had to meet with the Deputy Premier. Like, there is no other circumstance in Queensland that I can recall where a Member of Parliament meets a candidate for selection of a school. You meet them afterwards, you congratulate them on their appointment. You don't meet a candidate before selection. 
And she, you, would you say that she should? She's never actually explained what that meeting was about, has she? No, she's never explained what it was about, uh, and and she can't explain it because if she said simply that it was uh, get to know you, then that's not right because the person. Uh, was essentially still in the process, having been though selected by the Independent Selection Committee. It was, it was although the Education Department wanted to get the tick of approval from Jackie Trad, and that's unfortunate. Now, the other question in all of this today is, we're going to give you copies of the letters that I wrote to the Triple C a week ago, uh, where I asked the Triple C that I, I said I referred this matter five months ago. Uh, where is the matter at? Is it still in an assessment stage or is it in an investigation stage? The Crime and Corruption Commission chairman wrote back to me at, uh, just before five o'clock yesterday confirming that it was in the investigation stage now. Who else is being investigated? Is Grace Grace, the Education Minister, under investigation? The Director General? The Deputy Director General? Because there were allegations that the, director, the Deputy Director General was text messaging Jackie Trad about the appointment process. So who else? is involved in the investigation. Because if the Education Minister, the DG or the DDG were, then they should also step down. Has the C said anything other to you about the investigation other than just an investigation is happening? Look, the latest, uh, I have been corresponding with the C for about five months now, back and forward. Uh, we had uh, tip-offs of the text messages. We had tip-offs of the, uh, the original tip-off in November. Uh, we then had the RTI document, which confirmed the enrolment uh, details and report was actually given to government before the whole process started in any event. I referred all that to the Triple C uh, and it was a matter of frustration on my part that eight days ago I wrote to the Triple C and said, for goodness sake, what's going on? This has been going on five months. Are you assessing it or are you investigating it? Uh, they've written back to me yesterday saying they're investigating it. Uh, how long they've been investigating it, I'm not sure, but I can tell you if the Premier or the Deputy Premier knew that there was an investigation underway prior to yesterday, then they were very slow to act on this. Is standing aside good enough at this point in time? You know, you said this has been months in the moment. Absolutely not. Yeah. How many chances does Jackie get, you know? Uh, there is a reason that Jackie is referred to as dodgy Jackie across Queensland. She did not disclose the house purchase. She thought she could get away with it. Her arrogance is blinding her to good governance. Anastasia Palaszczuk lets her get away with all this. This is an integrity scandal in the middle of an economic crisis, the biggest economic crisis we've had in Queensland in my lifetime, and we're losing the Treasurer, standing aside, we should lose her permanently, but also there should be an appointment of a, a permanent uh, Treasurer, not a temporary Treasurer. And I hear this morning, just before the press conference, that uh, the Premier has announced herself is going to be taking on the role of Treasurer, as well as Deputy Premier and Premier. You know, I would have thought the Premier would have had bigger things to do in the middle of a pandemic crisis and concentrating on getting 300,000 Queenslanders back at work. The other concern I've got, of course, is Anastasia Palaszczuk now is tre te acting Treasurer. This is the person that didn't even know the GST rate, so it concerns me now she's taken on the Treasury portfolio.